Okay, so thank you, uh, Camilo. And uh, our second presentation will bring in the perspective from a philanthropic organization, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, or CZI. And Vladimir Gukaisen is the CZI program lead on imaging community. Vlad is a big supporter of our community, and he's been instrumental in developing the CZI programs that are supporting global bioimaging and Latin America bioimaging. Today, he's going to tell us about the role of regional network organizations in advancing bioimaging. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this fantastic event. And once again, Andrea, Leonel, Andres, Oliver, and uh, Yara, Gleb, uh, it's a fantastic event, really bringing together so many wonderful people. Great to see all the familiar faces, looking forward to making new connections. And thanks again to the host for unforgettable extracurricular activities. So uh, I'm a member of the uh, imaging team, which is led by Stephanie Arte. And let me start from a brief uh, illustration. So this futuristic looking building is an European synchrotron radiation facility. It's a huge particle accelerator, uh, which can generate different types of electromagnetic waves at different stations. And one of these might be an X-ray. This particular facility is very unique in a way that it can generate X-rays, which can be 100 billion times brighter or more uh, powerful than the typical x-rays that you get in a hospital. Normally you would expect that would incinerate the tissues, but with a very smartly put scanning patterns, uh, sample preparation, particular optics, you can actually do fantastic things with that. And the team led by Peter Lee from the University College of London, uh, Paul Tafferon, Claire Dio, they uh, came up with a technology which is called hierarchical uh, phase contrast tomography, uh, computer, computerized tomography. And that is a uh, approach that will allow you to image the tissue at a variety of different resolutions. You can go all the way from scanning the entire organ or actually a body to imaging sections of a brain, uh, to imaging cells, all the way to the cellular resolution. This is a brilliant example of what imaging can provide. Uh, the imaging has a unique capability of seeing things in context. Because for many of the diseases, we need to understand the onset and progression of the disease, which requires us imaging or seeing the disease at a variety of different resolutions, all the way from cellular, where all of the molecular events start the disease, all the way to the progression and formation of, let's say, tumors and everything on a, a tissue level or even on a body level, just to understand, for example, how metastasis progresses. So this is what we want to achieve in the imaging program. And the reason we want to do that is imaging is a part of a broader mission or, or initiative, which is a science, uh, Chan Zuckerberg Science Initiative, which has a goal of curing, preventing, or managing all diseases by the end of the century. Now, in order to achieve this audacious goal, we uh, have the philosophy of supporting science and technology, which is the distinctive feature of CZI. It's a very big stress on developing the technology that will enable science that would bring us to this uh, audacious goal. Now, the vision of the imaging program to that end is to provide scientists and physicians everywhere with the ability to visualize any biological process across special scales in real time anywhere in a human body. So to that end, we have identified several strategies. One is, of course, supporting the development of the breakthrough technologies. So we have the Frontiers program, uh, and uh, within the Frontiers program, which we consider discovery, we announced the RFAs or requests for applications or grant programs that uh, helps the developers in particular direction to avoid or overcome current breakthrough, the current uh, bottlenecks in technology. So, for example, we had the programs that support uh, uh, imaging technologies that would uh, allow us seeing things through bone and tissue still at cellular resolution or on the other side of the spatial scale that's visualizing the proteins in cells, that's visual proteomics. Currently, we just closed and uh, accepting applications for another one, adding another dimension that's seeing in real time all the processes. In addition on, to that, we have announced another initiative that's an institute, that's a physical space that would bring together multidiscipline teams uh, to accelerate the innovation. And of course, there is data coming from all of these technologies. So another thrust is the analysis. It's uh, pro to provide the universal access to reproducible quantitative 
image analysis of insights uh, into biological events. Now, finally, once all of these technologies are out, we need to make sure that scientists and physicians everywhere have access to it, and that is the role of the community. Here, the goal is to foster a thriving global community to promote dissemination. Now, to show you uh, here, our goal is also to identify the gaps in funding to uh, invest or to support uh, in these directions, and then through success in these projects to ensure to help with grantees to show sustainability and attract funding from other stakeholders. Now, when we started all of this, the very first gap that we identified was that the key experts, imaging co-directors or image analysts, they do not have currently uh, an avenue to secure funding for their salaries, and it's a constant struggle. So that was the goal of the first program, Imaging Scientists. And on the map on the left, you see that we did not receive many applications other than the United States, Europe, or Australia. We received two applications. One came from South Africa, another one came from Uruguay. On a, both of these applications were funded, they were brilliant, but we started asking ourselves, what is going on? Why are we not getting too many applications there? So we launched an investigation and uh, I've reached out, we've, sp we've spoken, this is how I established connection with many people here in this audience who helped us very much to understand the unique set of challenges. So what happens is salaries are a problem in some of the countries in Latin America, Africa, uh, former Soviet countries, but there are a plethora of other challenges. Uh, so we identified some of these which will be common. So, for example, building capacity, uh, training and education, or forming the networks. But why is this important? For years, uh, in many of these countries, the investment in science, in, in research and development was not sufficient. That brought to the change in paradigm in research. People started adapting to that and adapting the entire cycle of research to the technologies that were less expensive. So they went away from imaging. Now the goal was to bring them back. And that means a lot of advocacy, a lot of workshops, a lot of educations, and coordinating all of the activities of imaging scientists. It didn't die in these countries, but it required coordinating all of this in order to show that all of these resources can be efficiently used right now so that the governments will be compelled to fund more to see this efficiency overall in the network. Now, another thing is, and that brings us back to the first example is that a lot of technologies that will come out from these innovations are going to be, they may be quite expensive. Uh, so for example, that particular European synchrotron radiation facility, it's funded by several countries and there are only three sources like that in the world. So it's impossible to put it in every country and it's a role of the regional hubs in order to bring that. Now, in order to make this efficient, we need to make sure that there is an efficient utilization of resources, and this is where the networks come. So we see, you see that with, there, is, there are regional hubs that will provide access to every region to the brilliant scientists which are currently in these regions but don't have access to it right now. And then we have actually several years of preparation of developing the workflows or coordinating everything, of developing the capacity, of educating them on to see how all of this imaging can actually advance their research and to help them to accelerate this research for these coordinated activities. So this was just a picture illustration that I wanted to bring here. As a result of just the first interviews, we were able to expand all of these programs. And currently there are 47 imaging cores, uh, 10 network organizations. In, they benefit, and these programs benefit imaging scientists in more than 40 countries. And we look to expand that further. I'm very happy to announce that, that the latest one uh, the advancing imaging through collaborations, we received application from 46 countries. We are very excited to see this progression and we hope to expand that further. But I just want to say once again that the work that is being done in the regions is extremely important and it has a great potential of advancing biomedical sciences and to bring us to this goal of curing, preventing or managing all diseases by the end of the century. Thank you.